Hello everybody in El Paso and whoever else might be watching this now or down the road in a few hours or tomorrow. Uh, thank you for tuning in for this presentation I'm going to give you about the El Paso city taxes and the city budget coming up in 2020. I know that a lot of people this is a boring topic. This is not something you want to discuss. This is nothing you care about. But honestly it's something we have to talk about. And you need to understand what's happening so you can be prepared for what's coming up here in the next, I don't know, few weeks, few months as they get ready to vote on this budget uh, that's going to take El Paso to the next year's worth of tax increases and what have you. Um, this year, how can I put it uh, mildly? Uh, I think uh, this 100 degree weather is getting to these representatives' brains and the council is losing their, their minds. Uh, after what after you watch this presentation I think you'll get a better understanding of what we're dealing with here in El Paso and uh, if you're not from El Paso and you're watching this I think you're gonna kind of find some similarity similarities of what's happening in your city as well because um, all cities seem to be losing their minds and spending money like crazy like they have all kinds of money to spend so uh, our city is no different <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you what's going on here so you have an understanding of what's happening and, and you hopefully you can share this information with your friends and your family oh god if you're in El Paso you need to really listen to this because things are not good here all right well I'm gonna go ahead and get started as some of you know um, on Monday the uh, July 10th what was that Tuesday July 10th this week's City Council uh, meeting on Tuesday the city discussed uh, the, the budget and they had a nice big presentation of all the departments and then they had Robert uh, Robert get up there to CFO and ex and talk about what the uh, budget needs to be in order to meet the uh, requirements for all the departments and that's an annual thing that the city council does and it's an annual thing for this city council to increase tax the tax rate because that's what they do um, so Robert Cortinas did his presentation yesterday. If you had a chance to watch it, if you haven't, I can sum it up for you in two words. It's tax increase. <laughs> and if you guessed otherwise, you would be wrong. So he gave his presentation, and uh, it was not surprising to those of us who have been following this uh, very carefully for the, past, for the past few years. But I want to share with you an article from the KVIA that talks about this, uh, this budget um, discussion for the city council and uh, let's go ahead and flip to that right now uh, so you guys can see what's going on so if you can see this screen here it says the um, El Paso Council Monday was briefed on a preliminary budget for the upcoming fiscal year the preliminary budget calls for a tax rate increase of 3.99 cents that comes to about to $39 increase in property taxes for a home valued at $100,000 all right, CFO Robert Cortina said that this proposed tax rate increase is likely to change. Now I'll explain to you why that's likely to change here in a second. On July 25th, the city will receive certified property valuations which can affect the tax rate. Now, I'm gonna explain to you these valuations here in a second, but let's read the rest of this. We have a meeting scheduled for July 30th for the city council uh, pre uh, to present those values to them. That could have an impact on a proposed tax rate he said the city plans on investing 15 million dollar more in police and fire and 7 million in street improvements and it says here quote from the, from the mayor margo we have a 15 million dollar increase just for public safety police and fire for their contracts the street issues are number two we have to fully take care of the potholes the resurfacing and the reconstruction of streets then the third thing that the people have talked about has to do with parks and those kinds of things now, let's go back up here for a second and check this out, what it says here. Now, Robert Cortina said that the proposed tax rate increase is likely to change. And the reason why that is, if you read down here, <clears throat> where it says on July 25th, the city will receive certified property valuations. What that means is the city is getting their, all the property in the, in the city of El Paso, in the city limits, appraised, and as they do it every year. When that magic number comes out, the city then decides how much they can either increase taxes or not increase taxes based on what the value is of their property, which is all of our tax-based property. So um, I'm going to show you a, um, a, a 
uh, a piece of the 2019 budget that has the explanation of what that means and I'll show you here in a few minutes once we get to it but just keep that in mind right now that they they haven't decided what the tax rate increase is going to be this is a, a, a rough estimate nine times out of ten what it says is what it's going to be okay so let's move on to the next and let me talk to you about what we saw on that on that presentation yesterday so this is one of the screens the general fund expenses this is where the city spends its its money a lot of its money so you can see here that it says um, uh, goal one through goal eight they have goals and then they assign the budgets to them the different departments or the, uh, or the different areas of government and then they assign a number I want you to pay, pay close attention to number goal number four where it says quality of life in 2019 they spent 45 million in, in 2020 they want to spend 55 million if you go and look at the variance and the percent increase that's a 21% increase. That's a $9 million increase for quality of life. Now, if you look down lower on the slide, there you see in small letters goal number four. Quality of life includes operating and maintenance costs, including four water parks and the cost of water. Now, if you saw my video uh, at uh, Representative Sam Morgan's meeting a few months ago, I flat out told the mayor that the solution to this is to not is to stop spending money on things we don't need. Here's ten million dollars worth extra of things we don't need. The city's going to build four water parks. And it's going to and ten million dollar budget is very, very low number. But that's the goal to build build, build four water parks across the city. And then you gotta pay for the water. All right. But understand that the CFO Robert Cortina said a few a few weeks ago and this are in his interview, he said he told the city council actually during the city council meeting, this is last year or earlier earlier this year rather. Robert Cortina, look at that middle paragraph. Well, he says in the top paragraph there that it's, it the idea of cutting closing swimming pools and libraries and rec centers should be the idea for the uh, for for next year because the budget is not going to agree with the amount of revenue they take in. So Robert Cortina has told the council in the middle paragraph, should also consider decelerating the hiring of police officers to help the city meet rising costs for public safety and debt on the 2012 quality of life projects. He goes on to say, he said the council's acceleration of police hiring, quality of life bond project completion, and maintaining older facilities has increased debt and made those efforts more expensive. He goes on to say that come budget season, the council should consider closing facilities with their age condition and usage in mind. And here's a quote from our CFO. You're not going to save a whole lot of money by closing one of those older facilities down, but that's an option. And he goes, that's potential for a reduction in costs. But then if you look at the bottom right here, Cortinas says, the city is not producing enough new revenue to keep up with the rising operation and management costs and debt service obligations that need to be paid. Now, if you understand how this works, the city brings in revenue with primarily two streams. It's property values and sales tax. And you get your property value appraisal uh, rising, that means they make more money on your tax. Now sales, sales tax revenue is a different story. If people go shopping, then that means more money they're gonna get on sales tax revenue. If people are not shopping, it means that they're not gonna make enough money, make as much money on sales tax revenue. Now keep that in mind. I'm gonna show you a chart here on our population growth and, that, and what that means for El Paso and what that means for this budget. But so what you have right here, you have the CFO saying you are not making enough money, you are not bringing in enough money to keep up with the operating and management cost of what's going on in the city. But what does the city turn out and do? They turn around and build more things that we don't need and they're not, they're not things that we can just ignore. They're, these are actual buildings, these are actual water parks that we have no choice to maintain for the next 20 30 years so it's not like we can just shut the water off and ignore them because that'll that'll of course lose revenue 
and that'll of course be a waste of our tax dollars so these water parks that they're going to build it's going to require maintenance costs it's going to require employee costs it means expanding the government the city council is getting this city into becoming a business and the city is spending money on things that it cannot guarantee are going to bring in revenue now in an article cortina said just yesterday in a, in a comment he made just yesterday he said none of these new ideas or these new ventures is going to bring a hundred percent return on the cost he, he he admits it and every anybody who's in business will tell you that there's no way the city is going to make a profit or even break even on these water parks for ages for ages because it's impossible you got taxpayers paying the money for these water parks you got taxpayers you taxpayer money being spent on these water parks and then you have taxpayers having being charged a fee to use these water parks and they still won't be able to bring in 100 percent of what they spent because you have ongoing maintenance and staff costs so you're never going to break even on any of these expenses what the city is doing is giving us entertainment to distract us from the fact that they are going broke and the city is not in a good position they can taunt their double-a rating all they want but the bottom line is we are the number two tax city in the country we are the number two homestead property tax entity a uh, city in the country now I'm gonna show you uh, something I told you I was gonna talk about earlier let's talk about tax valuation look at the highlight spot the city is authorized to issue tax supported bonds remember that they're allowed to issue tax supported bonds up to 10 percent of the assessed taxable values within city limits the total certified assessed valuation for year 2018 is 35 billion dollars setting the debt limit to 3.5 billion dollars all right now remember the number 3.5 billion dollars it's going to be very important here in a few minutes going on total obligations as of August 31st 2018 is 1.8 billion dollars now let me translate for those of you who are not savvy on this tax stuff and this city jargon and whatever total obligations means all the money the city is in debt we are in debt 1.85 billion dollars 1.85 billion with a B dollars now when you see what it says it represents 5.25 percent of the certified assessed valuation and is well below the established debt limit okay remember what I told you remember we have a debt ceiling of 3.5 billion dollars okay remember that we're gonna come to that now I'm gonna go and talk to you about this this chart I want to show you our taxes okay if you can see down at the bottom where it starts it's at 1989 over here on the left we're gonna go all the way to the right where we reach 2012 now I know you can't see it you might be able to see it on the left hand side there at we were just below a half a, a half of a, <laughs> a billion dollars we were at about 500 million dollars in 1989 in debt or as far as uh, yeah or as far as our tax rate we were at 0.5 percent of our tax rate now as you as you truck along you see here that once you get to 2012 our tax rate gets at 0.65 percent right, this is important because this is showing us the percentage that the that the uh, city is increasing our tax rate and that tax rate equates to dollars they get based on our property value all right now look at this is 2012 now what happened in 2012 for those of you watching most of you watching are going to be familiar because you're very uh, tuned into this but in 2012 the people the city of El Paso presented to the people of El Paso a quality of life bond and it was an astronomical some 500 million dollar bond and the people of El Paso happily paid for it that's where the arena came for from that's where uh, all this other fun stuff this the the, the children's museum uh, the Latino multi uh, Mexican American culture center there's a lot of things that were in there that people said yes you can have this money to spend on those items okay all right so that's that's 2012 now let's let's look what happened after after 2012 happened 
After the bond was approved by the people, I want you to watch this. Boom. Now look at our historical tax rate skyrocket. It shot skyrocketed. <laughs> it puts our tax rate as of their proposed tax rate this year is going to be 0 0.88. All right. We went from like 0 0.68 to 0.88 in a matter of seven years. That's huge. That's a 34% tax increase to the people of El Paso in a matter of seven years. Think about that. 34% increase in only seven years after that bond was approved and the people voted. The people got suckered into that. The city lied a lot and they twisted it all and they gave us false numbers and they ended up forgetting to include the cost of interest of items as you go along and this is what we're dealing with now if you watch this if you watch their presentation you are gonna see that this is where we're at today alright so <laughs> that's gonna be a 34 percent increase over the last seven years since that bond passed now if you have population growth and you have more people coming to El Paso or even just being born and growing up that are going to pay more revenue in sales tax or more revenue in property tax at the same rate or similar you'll be fine but look at our population chart this is our population growth if you look in the middle of the chart you see 673,745 people that is the population as of 2012 Fast forward to 2017, 2018 is not much, actually it's 2018 there, 2018 and 2019 actually, that's a new chart. The population according to the city budget, these numbers are from the city budget's official numbers, the population today, or this that, that when they took that number was 690,000 people. We gained 16,000 people over the course of 7 years, or 2.45% increase. Let's go back. Our tax since 2012 has increased 34%. Our populations only increased 2.4%. You do the math, and you see what that means. For those of you who don't want that don't know what that means, that means each one of us is paying a hell of a lot more for taxes because we are having no population growth. No other new citizens are coming to El Paso to help us uh, pay for these items to pay in property taxes to help this city do the things they want to do. And when they go back and they charge this kind of tax, okay, when they charge this kind of increase in tax, that means more money out of our pockets and less money we can spend. And I'll just ask you guys, how, how much can you, how often can you guys go see the Chihuahuas? Now, when you talk about the Chihuahuas, you got to understand the only reason the Chihuahua Stadium is still open is because they increased the hotel occupancy tax extremely high. We have the highest hotel occupancy tax in the country. They take, when people come through and they stay at hotels, or your family comes and they pay an, an, an enormous amount of tax, that tax money, uh, that fee that they got there, that hotel tax goes right to Chihuahuas. And who owns the Chihuahuas? Well, Paul Foster owns the Chihuahuas. So guess what? The tax money from those hotels are the only reason that stadium is still open. Because last I checked, they were about two hundred and fifty thousand or so in the in the in the in the red, according to their last their latest budget numbers. The Chihuahua Stadium is not sustainable. No stadium in this country is sustainable. Understand that. St stadiums are nothing but tax sucking black holes, <laughs> to put it mildly, and we got suckered into this. Now let me explain to you why we got suckered into this. Understand, there's this thing called Borderplex, and these, these rich folks own a lot of buildings downtown. Paul Foster came to town, and he started spending a lot of money on buildings downtown. People ask, why did he have to have a stadium downtown? Why did he have to have it downtown? Well, it's because when you build a stadium downtown, and you own half the property downtown, guess what that does to your property value? The value of your building skyrockets. And guess what? The Borderplex... Alliance uh, went ahead and banked, banked. After that stadium was built, they decided, hey, we need to put in here an arena 
That's why you see the big fight for the arena. It has nothing to do with helping you and me live a better life. It has nothing to do with our quality of life. It has everything to do with increasing the values of those properties downtown so that they can make more money when they sell those buildings. And guess who's selling their buildings downtown? The Borderplex is selling the Chase building, the Wells Fargo building, and a couple other buildings that they owe to our friend Paul Foster. So they're making a killing off of him, and guess what? He needs that stadium. He needs that new arena built downtown. Okay? He needs a new arena downtown because that, that arena goes in, and guess what? That value goes up even higher. And then that means his buildings gain even more value. So you got to understand, this quality of life bond that they gave to us and sold to us in 2012 has done nothing. And you could see by this chart right here, that quality of life bond did nothing but suck dollars out of our family's pockets. That's all it did. Meanwhile, what's going on with our streets? What's going on with our police? What's going on with our fire department? What's going on with the things that truly matter to you and I as citizens? It's being neglected. Those items are being neglected. I got something coming up here on this next slide that's going to really open your eyes if you haven't seen it yet. Okay. So remember, this quality of life bond in 2012 was around $500 million. I'm just going to leave it, let's just call it an even $500 million. Although it cost us a lot more because you guys know that stadium cost three times as much as they said it was. This children's museum that they're getting ready to put up is going to cost three times as much. Everything they build and have built out of this quality of life bond, for the exception of the, of the Mexican American Culture Center, which they screwed us and they shoved it into the library downtown, Everything else, they've spent enormous amounts of money on. Way more than we approved in the bond. Way more than we approved. So that's why you see this number shoot up. Because they have, they have no money to do those things. And remember our, article, our little article earlier. Robert Cortinas, what did he say? Look at the last bottom, the bottom line. Cortinas says the city is not producing enough new revenue to keep up with the rising operating and management costs and debt service obligations that need to be paid. Because what they're doing is they're spending everything too quickly. He says they're building way too fast. And because they, they're spending way too fast, and here you can see his quote here, he says here, um, look at the bottom paragraph. Again, he said the council's acceleration of police hiring, quality of life bond project completion, and maintaining older facilities has increased debt and made those efforts more expensive. Well, he's not wrong because when you look at the tax increase chart, this is why that number is going up so high because they cannot sustain the spending that they are doing, which is why I argued with the mayor and I looked him in the eyes and, and my representative Sam Morgan and said, stop spending money on things we don't need because the taxes are going through the roof. You know, these people, they're spending your money, so it doesn't matter to them. They don't care what you think because it's not their money. It's your money. And that's the problem with our local government here. I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican. It doesn't matter. We got a Republican mayor. We got all kinds of Democrats on the city council. They don't care either way. They're spending your money. All right. Now, here's the, here's the zinger. Are you guys ready for this? Just today... Be and now you know we're we're already at 1.8 billion dollars all right we're already at 1.8 billion dollars in debt okay <laughs> we're already at 1.8 billion dollars in debt and guess what this came out just today in the city council boom now guess what they're considering el paso city council is considering nearly 1 billion dollar bond for expenses including public safety for our November ballot. <laughs> Why do they need all this money? Well, let's go ahead and read a small section of this news report. If you can't see it, I'll read it for you. It says here that nearly, nearly 504 miles of residential streets and nearly 170 miles of arterial roadways need resurfacing while dozens of other streets need reconstruction according to city presentation and now below it says El Paso Police Department needs a new headquarters and new regional command center on the east side 
a new central regional command center and is looking to consolidate command centers in the downtown area. The fire department is also looking for new facilities on the east side and west side. Now let's explain something here. Why are these why is the, why are the police and the fire departments looking for new areas, new new buildings because the sprawling of the city. We are not growing. I showed you this population chart. We are not growing. We have grown 2%. The city consistently lies. It's constant. They lie. It's a blatant, flat-out lie. When they say, we've had tremendous population growth, we have not had tremendous population growth. The county has grown. The county has over 800 and something thousand. The city of El Paso, the tax base, the, the, the people that they collect taxes from has not grown. So they are lying to you. They are lying to you flat out. What's happening is sprawling. You've heard this term. If you haven't, if you're not aware, sprawling is nothing more than the city approving housing areas in the outskirts of town so that their little, uh, uh, their, their buddies who own these construction companies and own these, uh, uh, these building companies and etc. They can make money. Now who's buying these homes? Well, you have military come in, but they're not really coming in because you see this is part of that 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 percentage, that that value. It's also our kids that are growing up, that are moving out of the middle of El Paso, going to the outskirts. And guess what? They are not new people moving to El Paso. So what happened is this sprawling created these neighborhoods, especially in District 5 where John Hogan ran, and he told everybody in that district that the priority was a police station and roads over there. And he would have, believe me, he would have, he would have already been working on this. We wouldn't need that $1 billion bond had John Hogan made it to city council. But instead, we got some other knucklehead in there that never knew politics in her life, did nothing but sell a few houses, got money from Foster and Hunt and the other, and the other billionaires, and she now is at their beck and call. And that's another presentation I'm going to show you. I wanted to put it here. I didn't want to make this too long. But anyways, you got city council members on that council that don't know squat about how to run a city. You got Schwarzbein. You got, I, mean, I can go down the list. Guys, we lost in 2018 when we failed to elect the people that we had pushed for, like John Hogan, like Rich Wright, like Rick Bonart like uh, 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 Veronica Frescas, we lost when we did not support them. Nicholas Vasquez, we lost, guys. We lost. We, we screwed the pooch for El Paso. When we let these, these people back into the city council and let this newcomer who never, I don't even know if she's lived outside of her own parents' house, Remember, Peter Schwartzbein was living in his mother's house when he ran for council. I don't know why. He's a genius that brought in our trolley. That $97 million black hole, all right, that's throwing our sales tax revenue down a dark tunnel that no one's ever going to see. These people are the ones running our city. And this is why we're seeing, we're seeing this type of tax increase. Because we have knuckleheads running this city. Now let's go back to this, this bond number. You see these people here? <laughs> there's, your gen there's your city manager who we need to get rid of. But he's not an elected position, so we need to vote out that position altogether, and we need to get rid of city manager and let the mayor do the strong mayor stuff so that we can save ourselves half a million dollars that we're paying this guy. And there's Claudia Ordaz, who's, I don't want to tell you how corrupt this woman is. She's in the pockets, of, they're in the pockets. She belongs to Foster and him with all the way she's voting. So let me explain to you now. You see, again, I'll go back to this chart. That increase is from 2012. The city doesn't know what to do. The population has flatlined 2.4% in the last seven years. There's no growth. Now they want to put another $1 billion bond for expenses on things that we need. Things that we need. Go back to this, this chart right up here. The new quad, the general fund expenses on this brand new presentation that the CFO Robert Cortinas gave to our city. $10 million extra for quality of life to build four water parks, which is extremely low. It's very low for what they want to do. So that number's a lie. 
if if I'm understanding this number, because he may have another presentation later that says different. But that's what they want. Because they screwed us, now they need a billion dollars to pay for the things that we need. Cities, I mean with streets rather, police, and fire. Now guess what this million dollars, for you people who don't know what a bond is, a bond is a, a piece of, 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 of uh, it's, it's a budget proposal given essentially to the city people saying, hey, we need a billion dollars and we need your approval for it. And once you give them that ticket, once you sign that, 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 that uh, dotted line and, and vote yes, well, they're allowed to now raise a billion dollars by different means. And that in turn means tax increases because we see from the 2012 quality of life bond here on this chart again, we approved $500 million roughly, right? People did not understand what that meant. Well, look at this chart. <laughs> It meant a 34% tax increase in seven years, and they're still not done building the quality of, quality of life projects. They're not done with them yet. So that number has to increase. There's no way it cannot increase. And now with this, that, that, now let, let me go back. This, this increase is off of only $500 million, 34% off of, of a $500 million bond increase, bond, bond passage, okay? What do you think a billion dollar added to our debt's gonna gonna cost taxpayers? Remember, guys, we are number two in the nation, right behind Detroit, Michigan, in highest property taxes, homestead tax. That means your the tax you pay on your home to the city. We are the second highest in the country. Understand that. Now, let me show you something. This is our total debt from 2008 to 2018. Total debt meaning meaning uh, general obligations and, and bond obligations, bond debt. This is it combined. 1.8 billion is where we stand today. 1.8 billion with a B here in El Paso. From 2008, we, were, we had just hit 1 billion. In a matter of 18 years, we've gone over 800 million, give or take more or less, because we keep we keep paying and we keep signing certificates of obligation. Certificates of obligation are nothing we voted for. Those are just it's like a a blank check that the that the mayor signs and adds more debt, adds more debt, adds more debt. So we are currently at 1.849 billion. Now I just kind of threw together <laughs> a chart just so you can get a visual. Of what's gonna happen with that bill one billion dollars which is 940 million so I'm just gonna go ahead and escalate it to 1 billion it will probably turn out to be 1.4 billion or 1.5 billion because they always under budget for these projects now these street costs and the question is did they did they account for inflation this time did they account for you know materials that might increase in price None of that stuff's all needs to be looked at but let's just assume, uh, let's just assume it stays what it is, and they add one billion dollar to our debt. <laughs> Boom. That's just a straight line that, because we, they're going to pay as they go a little bit. But as you see from this chart here, it's a trajectory which is northbound. So the new total debt after this bond, if El Paso is dumb enough, if El Paso is dumb enough to say yes to this bond. We are going to be at $2.8 billion debt. Remember what I told you. I asked you to remember a number. What was that number I told you? Remember this? Read here in the third line. The, the debt limit is at $3.5 billion. The city is allowed, based on their 10% of assessed value charter, they are at they're allowed to go up to 3.5 billion dollars in debt with no issues this chart shows you that they're gonna hit 2.8 billion dollars in debt once we go ahead and approve this bond so they had a 50 about a 48 percent cushion when you look at what what it was this past year they had a 48% cushion here because it says it's only 5.25 of the certified oppressed. Multiply it by that by, by 10. 
that's 52% of the debt limit and you got 52% and leaves 48% window or, or, or cushion to add now you got a one million one billion dollar bond to add to the already 1.8 billion now you have 2.8 billion all right now <laughs> I don't I don't even know what to say with this man the, the only reaction I have is this <laughs> boom explosion man I don't know where El Paso is gonna stand after this if this bond uh, 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 approval happens I almost want to I almost want to believe that they're just doing this knowing it's not gonna pass so that way when they present their their new budget for 2020 people are gonna say oh well that's not too bad but guys it's still bad because they're adding four cents to our current debt which is gonna push us up back to the uh, where are we at to the right here it's gonna push us here this this dot all the way on the on the right is where the new current budget is gonna set our our uh, tax rate which is right around 0.88 percent so you got to understand what they're doing here what they're doing here is they're, they're I think they're just going for broke they have nothing else to, to they have no way else to, to argue or people for for years, many years in a row, have asked for streets repairs, have asked for police stations, have asked for uh, the, uh, the fire departments, have asked for all these areas to be taken care of. But let me ask you something. The police need money, without a doubt. They need new automobiles, they need new, new stations, they need new equipment. I have no issues with giving the police department money. We are one of the safest cities because of our police department. So. Our priority should be giving them money so that they could sustain our uh, our city's safety. Fire department as well. They do damn good work. They've helped me in my life and my family. I have no issues with the fire department. And I certainly have no issues with streets. Now, you as citizens, you, you as citizens in El Paso should be banging down their doors asking them why they're spending all these millions of dollars on, on water parks and and giving tax incentives to places like Top Golf, to giving tax incentives to places like iFly or whatever the heck that's called. That's already, by the way, that's already that building. The building iFly is in. They're already facing foreclosure because they're not making money. If you've seen their business model, it doesn't work in El Paso. And they were floating the idea of bringing Great Wolf Lodge in here, which none of us can afford. <laughs> Most of us can't afford it. And you look at what our, my, my brilliant representative is doing with Cohen Stadium. A lot of people, see what the sad thing is a lot of people in El Paso don't understand what it means to build new things that the city runs, okay? What they did to Cohen Stadium, they destroyed Cohen, Cohen Stadium so they can build a water park there. But they did it in a TERS, which is a whole nother topic. But that TERS steals money from us and it puts it back in those developers' pockets in that area. In, this, in a sense, what that's going to do is, first of all, it's going to build a water park that, guess what, you and I are going to pay for because we have to pay for the maintenance of that thing. It's going to cost $20 million just to get that area ready and build this park, okay? $20 million. And then on top of that, they're going to be building buildings around it like this, like this, like kind of like they're trying to do some kind of... Um, entertainment district thing where you have stores and restaurants and stuff which is fine but how they're doing it is, is garbage man what they're doing is they're gonna build the city's gonna build these buildings and essentially tell a company like dollar store or like I don't know pick a store X, XYZ store and they're gonna bring them in and they're gonna say you can you're gonna use this building and for 30 years you're not gonna have to pay a, a dime except for the sales tax you're not gonna have to pay a dime for the property you're not gonna have to pay because that's the turds that money that comes back from the TERS that they got to, they, they look at the property value, what it is right now, they freeze the property value. As that property value increases, all that extra revenue that we should have gotten goes back to the developer and goes back in the TERS. That's why when, when, when Morgan and them say, oh, it's a private, a private public partnership, that's a great deal. It's a deal that screws you and I. What it does for us, it does bring us stores there. It does bring us a water park. It does bring us things there. But let me ask you, what, what is it worth to you? 
what is it worth to you to have your money being given to a business that's most likely from out of town, a corporation, to, to be there just so you can go and spend money at their store that you're already paying for to begin with? Is it worth it to you to have this or to, to have that money instead of being using used for your streets, for your libraries, for your parks, for the things that matter that the city should be doing? Does it matter? Is it worth it to you? That's the question you have to ask yourself. To me, no. No, it's not worth it to me because what that's going to do now is guess what? All of us in the Northeast, now when they go back and appraise our values, guess what they say? Oh my gosh, you guys have a wonderful water park. You guys have a wonderful shopping center. Your value is going to go up because you have this amenity near your home. And now we're going to pay more in property value, property tax, because our values are going to increase because of this artificial entertainment center that we, you and me, are paying for to begin with. So we're paying to have our property values increased so that we don't have to drive to Bassett Center or Sierra Vista or, 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 or wherever so we can drive a few miles here. So what? how much are you willing to spend on these items for your luxury in exchange for your property values going up? I'm paying about $3,600 a year in my property for my taxes. Guess what it's going to be after that, 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 that center, that little entertainment district goes up? I don't even know. I, after this, this year's tax increase, it's going to push mine up about another $100. Once that thing goes in there and they reassess the value of my home, I imagine it will go up another 100 or two. I may be close to $4,000. And I'm probably one of the lower ones in some new houses. I know people that are spending four to $5,000 in taxes on the east side in those new neighborhoods. All right? So what's happening is people are leaving El Paso and, and moving into Santa Teresa, they're moving into Horizon. That's why those areas are growing because they can't afford to live here. We have retired people here that cannot afford these large increases of taxes. But what we have is a city that's continuing to be hungry for this growth that's not happening. If you've already spent all this money to build a stadium, <laughs> to put in a trolley that was a complete waste of $97 million. You bring in Topgolf, you bring in ridiculous companies that are just entertainment and food, and you wonder, why is the Paso not growing? <laughs> because nobody wants that garbage. Nobody's gonna move their company here. Nobody's gonna move their corporation here without us incentivizing it. And that city continues, the city continues to repeat the same ludicrous concept and hope with the hopes that the city just blossoms with population growth. It's not going to happen. This is El Paso, Texas. We're in the middle of nowhere. The closest city, real city, is not Albuquerque, is, is Phoenix. Going east, we have Dallas and those in Austin. That's where everybody wants to be. See, the people leaving California are coming through El Paso and going east. They're not stopping here in El Paso. They're driving east because in Dallas and that I-35 corridor is where you want to be if you're a corporation. You don't want to be in El Paso. You want to be over there. So we're doing, you and I are spending millions upon millions of dollars because we've entrusted this city council to grow this city and to take, but they're not doing, it's not working. Our city streets, a report came out that our city streets are one of the worst in condition cities in the, in the, in the nation. That's why they need the $1 billion to repair these city streets. Because their plan, a quality of life bond, their plan to improve our lives did nothing but damage and hurt our lives. You might think, well, there's a cute, pretty little stadium down there. There's a pretty trolley. What is it doing for you and your family? That's all I have to say. What is it doing for you and your family? Is there more food on your family's plate because of it? Right? <laughs> no. There's, in fact, there's less food on your plate because of it, because you're paying more in taxes because of their idiotic spending. Now, look at one more time. Look at this chart, guys. This is from 2012 Quality of Life Bond. <laughs> don't, don't you mistaken what this means. This means that our tax rate went up because the Quality of Life Bond was 500 million. They needed money to build the things in the bond, so they have to increase taxes to get that revenue. What they're going to do is they're going to do this. 
we're gonna have to increase taxes so they can get the money from what you think they're just gonna go borrow the money they're gonna take it from us they're gonna take our tax dollars it's that simple this bond that they're talking about it's a billion dollars <laughs> it's a billion dollars this is insanity this is absolute insanity guys this is like this is like saying well what the hell what do we got to lose man we're already 1.8 billion in debt there's no end in sight let's just go for it all let's just do it all it's going to kill our city man it's going to hurt our taxing tax values are going to in values are going to the state just tried to put a limit on the value uh, the t a percentage that they can increase their taxes but i guarantee you they're going to figure out ways to tax you more i can absolutely promise you that there's no way around it and i guarantee you the price number they put on these streets and this fire department police department stuff is is not going to meet is not going to be what they spend based on historical spending of the city it's going to be 20% to 30% more if, if not more so I want you to share this video with people and family in your in, in El Paso this is a brief overview because I could have gone for two hours three hours explaining this to you but I, I don't want to waste your time or mine I want you to just get the cold facts behind this you know it's so bad I had to call a friend uh, a good friend and I said am I am I reading this right man is that really a billion did they the city really ask for a is that gonna ask us for a billion dollars am, am I right am I seeing this right I could I was shocked I couldn't believe it after what we've been telling them about their spending about instead of cutting spending they don't know how to cut spending they only know how to spend spend more they don't know how to cut unnecessary services or cut out dead weight they only know how to grow the the government and when you grow your government, that means you have more employees, you have more facilities ma to maintain. That's more tax money that we didn't initially decide to give them. It's not just a building with the with the service. It's staff. It's 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 their salaries. It's their health insurance. It's contracting. It's all of that. All of that is in there, and we're paying for it. So El Paso, we've got to wisen up here. We've got to stop allowing the city to build things that we don't absolutely need because it's fun right now oh mijo i could take them to the water park yes but when you get your tax bill or when you go to pay your rent at the apartment or at the house you're renting some of you are paying a thousand eleven hundred dollars for renting somebody else's house that's going to go up some of you young people are renting at an apartment for 600 650 that's going to go up because that's the way it works we as consumers pay for those taxes when the city increases it the whole the people on the houses the people on the hotel or the ho the uh, the uh, apartments are not gonna say well that's less profit for me no they're not they're going to they're gonna hand that extra expense off to you to you, all of you so all of you here working these low-income jobs guess what if you're barely making it now guess what's gonna happen after this budget and this bond is passed a billion dollars guys and they said it's over a course of 10 years so that's gonna be about 200 million a year there's no way they cannot increase your tax rate it's impossible so if for those of you who say oh this is good we're gonna get streets we're gonna get the fire department yes you are but you're gonna get a huge tax increase in your property values because there's uh, in your top property tax because there's no there's zero way around an, an increase to your taxes with they talk this kind of money guys we've got stuff to to learn about here okay so there I want you to write a get a notepad or write these names or go back and write these names down because I want you to follow some people on Facebook okay these are guys and girls I don't care what their federal their their, their national or political party is it's irrelevant we're talking about the city okay we're talking about you and me we're talking about you and me down here at the level of city taxes it doesn't matter what what party they are it matters the ridiculous uh, 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 job they're doing it doesn't matter we got a Republican mayor and Democratic con uh, uh, city council members it doesn't matter it's all about the money Paul Foster's a Republican giving money to Democrats doesn't matter Woody Hunt he, he's a, a, a Republican giving money to Democrats you got all these guys you got uh, whatever whoever what's this guy's name um, Beto O'Rourke's the father-in-law, whatever his name is. He's giving money to these people to run for city council. So they don't care. All they care about is giving money to these people for their campaigns so they can do what they're told 
in return when they get on the city council. So when election season come around, me and all these other people I'm going to mention, okay, they're going to be telling you what to watch out for and who's the slime balls and who aren't. Because we've got to take this city council back, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you, first and foremost, my friend, my good friend, Judd Burgess. I know some of you guys say, think he's wacky. He's a great guy. He's smart, especially when it comes to the city council business. He's the guy that got arrested for standing up for the citizens when they went to vote on the, well, I think it was the Mexican American Cultural Center. And he told them it was just a dog and pony show that they went to vote and they already knew what they were going to vote, but they let the people crowd out crowd in the city council chamber and speak for no reason because they already knew they were going to vote to approve the whatever they did and he got arrested for our behalf he didn't intend to get arrested and he should never have gotten arrested but he got arrested so judd burgess follow 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 he's the owner of brave books over on arizona street judd burgess second an, an, an enemy to a lot of people but they don't understand max grossman follow max grossman he has excellent articles that he writes small summaries, small paragraphs, small whatever you want to call them, little blogs on his Facebook page, explaining what's happening down in Duranguito, why he's fighting so hard for that. One of the reasons is to keep that arena from going downtown because it's a scam. It's a money-making scam, a tax-sucking scam. Max Grossman is not our enemy, guys. Max Grossman is, is a team player that we need to have because he's effective and he's wise. Don't don't downplay Max and don't listen to what you're saying about the city. He's always talking bad about Max because they know that he's right. And if we get word of that Max is right, they're going to lose and they're going to regret. They're going to they're going to feel bad because we're going to not uh, uh, fall for their lies. OK, the next one is El Paso Grassroots. These guys uh, uh, are trying to get petitions going. They post articles every now and then. They'll tell you things uh, again. Now, John Hogan, John Hogan is a guy from. Uh, District 5, he's the one that we should have put in city council that we failed, that we failed with John Hogan. We should have put him in because this man knows his city uh, better than anybody. He's wise, guys. He knows exactly what he's talking about when he starts talking about the city. So, so follow John Hogan. He ran for city council um, uh, last year, and he lost out to this Isabel girl who, again, I don't, I don't think she even knows how to ride a bike. I don't know, man. But she doesn't know how to be a city council because you haven't heard her say a, a word. She hasn't said a word on that city council because she doesn't know what to say. And Isabel, if you happen to watch this or if anybody knows Isabel, you tell her, I tried to talk to you during your run of city council. You never answered me. I tried you on Messenger. I tried commenting on your posts. You never spoke to me. You never got back to me. And I knew you were going to do what you were going to do because when we look at your fi your campaign finances, you had uh, uh, you had um, uh, these guys. You had uh, Foster giving you money. You had Hunt giving you money. And I have all that information, and anybody could see it. And I'm happy to show anybody. And I'm going to do a presentation when it comes close to election time of who's giving these people money so you understand who they're going to work for. Okay, John Hogan. The next one I want you to write down is Veronica Frescas. She should have won. Veronica Frescas and Nicholas Vasquez. All right, these two guys, these two, well, I'm sorry, Veronica, her and Nicholas, they had some good ideas. Veronica, man, we should have, she should have won. She should have won. That's all I got to say. If you go back and listen to what she was saying in her debates, she was saying exactly what I'm saying and what many others are saying, that this city is spending money haphazardly and they don't know what they're doing. They're killing us. All right, and then the last one again, Nicholas Vasquez. He had some great ideas with the recycling system and all that good stuff. He didn't get he didn't get in either. All right, now the last person is uh, which you're not going to be able to follow here because he doesn't he's not doesn't have a big presence. But keep an eye out for uh, for Rick Bonart. He's the guy that spearheaded the petition for Lost Dog Trail and helped us save Lost Dog Trail. These people, these people I named, are the ones to follow. Uh, now and going forward for city council. Oh, I forgot one. I forgot one. I'm sorry, my buddy, my friend, Rich Wright, El Chuqueño. If you ever seen his blog, you need to follow it. But Rich Wright, I'm, in fact, what I'm going to do after this video, I'm going to go back and I'm going to tag all their names in this post so you guys can go and, and, and friend request them and follow them. Okay. Now, Rich Wright puts out articles on his blog, El Chuqueño. Uh, he's been doing it for years. This this guy, he's he's brilliant. Read what he says, and he'll he's explaining exactly 
where the problems are. And he'll, he'll highlight as the, as the days go on. He'll sometimes write a blog two or three times a day. And he's, and he's dead on. You guys, we got to start working together here. We've got to stop uh, uh, looking at these shiny new things as good things because they're killing us. The city can't even pay for our streets and our police officers, let alone now we they want to use our money to give incentives to bring in these businesses here who are going to be on our dime that we're paying for them. Otherwise, they wouldn't. Now, just if you had a business yourself, all right, and you were to move to El Paso with no incentives, you wouldn't make it because the financial situations of the families in El Paso are suffering. And part of it's suffering because our taxes are so high. But in order to get businesses to El Paso, we have to give them incentives, which means we're going to give tax dollars to the company so they could bring in their stuff and they build the building, bring the employees and operate. Because if we don't give them incentives, they'll never come because El Paso does not have the population growth. El Paso does not have the financial resources to sustain these companies. All right, guys, I'm already at an hour. Um, <laughs> it's been fun. I, something I think you guys needed to see. You needed to understand. Uh, follow me, follow Sun City Livestreams, follow my own personal page, Ben Carnavale. I'm going to keep posting. I post stuff every now and then. Yeah, I get personal things, my cat, dog, whatever. But follow me because I do a lot of this uh, discussion about uh, uh, city politics especially because I see what they're doing here. They're hurting all of us, guys. Our children that are going to grow up here are going to be screwed. Are they going to be screwed with taxes? They're not going to be able to live here. The city's going to go flatline here soon. Remember the city... <laughs> This is what's going to happen to El Paso. You might as well do it because we are not going to, we are not going to be able to afford living here anymore. All right, you guys. Um, that's my uh, presentation for today. I appreciate you guys watching. And um, as always, guys, uh, Sun City Livestreams, uh, follow us if you haven't already. And if you are following us, please share because uh, we go out and do events and we go out and see things all over the city that uh, you might not be able to make or you might not have known uh, what happening. So thank you guys for watching, and I will talk to you soon.